Hi, this is the second in a two-part video on how to get to know your data in Stata. So I am going to bring in a new data set for this part. This portion I'm going to talk a little bit more detail about the browse window. I'm going to show you a few things in there, and then I'm going to show you how to make some pictures. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a data set. So I'm going to bring in a built-in data set that comes uh, built into every copy of Stata. This data set is auto.dta, and you can access it by using the command sysuse. So when I hit enter, you can see all my variables popped in here. I can see what the variables are quite cleanly by doing describe, which I shorten to D. So here are the variable names. Here are the variable labels. You can see that these variables are about cars. I got make and model, price, miles per gallon, repair record in 1978, things like that. So let's go into the browse window to see what the data looks like. So a couple of things stand out in this browse window. The first is that this variable on the far left is written in red. And you can see when I scroll over it, the value of the variable shows up in this little window right there. Uh, so you can see that the value of this variable is just a string of letters. It's just a string of symbols. And it turns out that you can have variables like that in Stata, which are just a string of symbols. Uh, and these are called string variables, appropriately. Of course, there are some things which, there's some commands which you can't do on variables which are string variables. Uh, for example, you couldn't take the average of a variable which was just a list of symbols. How could you take the average of like B U I C K space, blah, blah, blah? Uh, so you want to sometimes be aware that these string variables are running around. I'm going to talk a little bit more about variable types in a later video, but one thing which you might want to be aware of is that some variables which you think are numbers, Stata may just think are a series of symbols. And the way that you're going to know that Stata thinks that something is a string variable, one way is, of course, you could look over here uh, under describe, where it says storage type strings are going to be labeled as something which starts with str. The other thing is in the browse window, uh, you're going to see that those variables show up in red. The variables which show up in black are numeric variables. So Stata reports 44,453, and Stata knows that that's, it's actually that number and not just 4453 that is the value of this variable for this particular observation. A second thing which you'll notice in this in this window is that there are a few observations where there's just a period instead of a number. A period just means it's a missing data point. So whenever Stata sees a period, it knows uh, that the value of this variable wasn't period. It just means that the value of this variable is not known. So it's as if this is a missing observation. Then the last thing which you'll notice is over here, on the far right side, I have a, another variable which is written in blue. This variable is called foreign. And when I scroll down here, you can see when I click on top of one of these cells, uh, up here, this is actually taking the value of zero. Even though it looks like domestic in my data set, the actual value of this variable for this particular observation is zero. Similarly, when I go on to the observations which are listed as foreign, the actual value is going to be equal to 1. So this variable foreign is just a dummy variable which is equal to 1 if the car is a foreign car and equal to 0 if the car is a domestic car. And the reason why it shows up in blue here and the reason why it's written out is because somebody, whoever made this data set, made a label for this variable. Uh, and they assign the label so that this variable would be labeled as being equal to domestic if the variable was equal to one, and that this meant that the car was a foreign car if the value of this variable was one. Did I say domestic was zero? Domestic is zero. Foreign is one. Uh, so uh, this, the fact that it's in blue is going to give you a way to distinguish between these numeric variables, which just have a label, as opposed to string variables, which are going to be written in red. I'm going to talk more, like I say, about data types in another video. Uh, another thing that you might want to do to get to know your data is to make pictures of it. So, for example, we could make 
a histogram of prices by using the command hist and then entering the name of the variable price. So this is going to make a histogram which looks like this. So this tells you we got a lot of cars in this price range, not as many cars in that price range, etc. Uh, of course, you might want to change the thickness of these. The prices in this data set are not binned into uh, only a few different values. It's really a continuous variable. And so if we wanted to make these, if we want to change the width of these bars, it's helpful to use an option called bin. So you'll notice here, after I ran this command, Stata, by whatever settings it determines bins, decided to make it so that there were eight bins, eight different rectangles. And then it starts at a particular value, and each bin is going to have a particular width. So if I wanted to, I could use the option bin to tell Stata to do a different number of bins. So if I do 15 bins, now I get something which is much more fine-grained. These rectangles are narrower. They're going to capture the frequency over narrower bands of price. You'll notice, by the way, that the other graph that I made just disappeared when I made this new one. And the reason why it disappeared is that Stata will only allow you to have one graph with the same name at the same time. So this graph is called graph, creatively. And it turns out that Stata just by default names every new graph, graph. So if you want to hold on to this one while you make another graph, you're going to have to name it something else. So I could go back and do the original one here. If I wanted to hang on to this one, I'll just name it Bob. And now there will be one graph named Bob and one graph named Graph. So these can coexist at the same time. So this is histograms. Another thing which you might want to do is scatter plots. If I do a scatter plot of price against mileage per gallon, then that will put price on the y-axis and MPG on the x-axis, miles per gallon. You'll notice because I didn't name this anything, it bumped out the existing graph that I already had there, so it replaced the graph which was already called graph. Uh, and now I have both the scatter plot and the other plot, which I named Bob. But if I had named this something else, I could have named this something other than Bob. Let's name it Jim. Then now I'm allowed to have Jim, Graph, and Bob all at the same time. Okay, there's going to be more. There's, I'm going to post more video on uh, more detail about how you can make graphs. There are all kinds of cool graphs that you can make in Stata, but this should get you started with being able to get some sense of what's going on in your data.